So in this one I want to show you how to make some bubbles in Blender 4.2 using the new shader attribute that we get. Um, these are going to be rendered in cycles, EV currently can't do anything like this, but this tutorial is going to be split up into three parts. First of all the geometry nodes for actually getting the uh, bubble distribution and the sort of floating up that we see. And then the second part is going to be shading of the bubbles and the third is sort of the lighting, rendering and compositing. So in a blank scene I'm just going to delete out everything and then I'm going to add in an icosphere which is going to serve as the emitter for our particles here in geometry nodes. So I'm going to add a geonodes group to this and I'm going to distribute some points on the faces of this sphere and these are going to be our particles that we're going to move up. First of all though I'm going to scale down the emitter in edit mode so that uh, we get less relative to the size of the sphere. And now I'm going to add in the simulation zone and this is what's going to allow us to move these particles uh, every frame. Now I'm going to start off with the set position node and I'm going to add the same set of nodes I always add for this. So we're going to set the position based on a named attribute, it's going to be a vector and it's our velocity attribute. We haven't made it yet but I'm going to call it V. And then I'll plug that into a vector map add node and add the position. So this is just offsetting our position by the velocity every frame. I'll group this node group as well and call it update position. Now what we need to do is affect the velocity before that node group. So if I add a store named attribute node, call it V. And now I'll plug in named attribute, set that to vector as well, and also call that V. So now we're just passing the velocity through and if I had a vector map in between I can now add an acceleration. So I'll group this node group as well and drag that vector add into the input called this accelerate. Now whatever value I put into this vector math node the particles will accelerate by once per frame. So you can see how they sort of start slow and then slowly get faster. Now what I want to do is spawn particles every frame so I'll add in a join geometry node and plug in our points back in there. Now in order to get some initial velocity, I'm actually going to duplicate this accelerate node group and put it right after we spawn the points. And this will sort of give the points a constant velocity rather than an acceleration because the initial velocity will always be zero. Now in order to introduce some randomness to the uh, particles when they spawn, I'm actually going to give another accelerate node group uh, before we get into the simulation zone. And I'm going to plug in a noise texture with normalize unticked and I'll plug in the color and you can see what that does is spew the particles out in these random directions. But there's a problem in that they just go along these straight paths. So how do we randomize this? You can see as I sort of play with the scale it, it kind of has the effect we want as we play it. Now in order to randomize this every frame what I'm going to do is set the noise texture to 4D and then plug in a scene time node. I'm going to use seconds actually into the W input. That would just change the noise texture over time so the direction that these particles go in once they spawn will change. And I'll use a vector math scale node after the noise and scale this down to 0.1 and that will reduce the randomness quite a lot. If I add a little bit of upwards direction to this I can sort of skew them all upwards and you can see we get the motion that we're looking for for our bubbles. I'll actually just delete out this accelerate node in the simulation node tree because there's actually nothing uh, being added here. Now all that I need to do is instance onto these points a sphere, um, but I'm not just going to plug a sphere in straight up, I'm going to give it a little bit of wobble like a bubble would have. I'll start by adding a UV sphere, then I'll use a set position, add in a noise texture, and we're just going to displace the sphere, untick normalize again to center everything. Turn the scale down on the noise, and then use a vector math scale node again to turn down the strength of the noise. And in order to animate it again, I'm going to just plug in scene time seconds into the W input of the noise after setting it to 4D. Now I'm going to use a subdivision surface node, followed by a set shade smooth, and you'll see what we get is now just this smooth sphere. Now all I want to do is just randomize the scale a little bit. So in the instance on points node, I'll plug in a random value into the scale. Now in order to control the scale just with one slider, I'm going to add in a math node after the random value, set it to multiply, and this will become sort of our uniform scaler. 
And then I'll play with the range on the random value to get some more extreme results. 0.1 to 2 seems to work good. And then I can play with this multiply value to globally scale them. Perfect. So that concludes part one of the tutorial. Now all we need to do is add in a set material node, create a bubbles material, and apply that there. Now over into the shading tab, I'm going to set the uh, render engine to cycles on the GPU, then go into rendered view. And to get some nice lighting, I'm going to come into the top right, turn off scene lights and scene world. And then I'll start by just turning transmission up on the shader to get a nice glass look and turn down roughness. Now you can see we're seeing quite a lot of noise from the HDR. So in under film, I'm just going to turn on transparent and transparent. Now the new attribute that we get in Blender 4.2 underneath this new thin film section is thickness. And this imitates a very thin material. You can see the uh, depth is in nanometers there. So I'll increase this to 500 and you can see that we naturally get this really nice sort of refraction going on that would be quite difficult to do previously. To randomize this per bubble, I'm actually going to use an object info node, use the random result, but I can't plug it straight into the thickness because uh, the values of the random output are from zero to one and the values that we need in the thickness are somewhere in the realm of 500. So I'll set the map range node to somewhere um, like 400 to 600 and then we should get some nice natural color variation in the bubbles there but that's really it for the shading of the bubbles it's it's really simple in blender 4.2 now so i'm going to go back into the layout tab and start setting up our lights and camera now if i come into rendered view you can see we don't have any lights yet i'm going to light this using a hdr so under the world tab i'll pick an environment texture and I'm just going to use one of the default ones that come with Blender, either this forest one, or I ended up using this interior HDR because I think it gave better lighting. Now I'll add in a camera and then camera to view. And I'll render region just to speed things up a little bit, turn up the focal length and start framing my shot. I'm going to open up another 3D view and so I can start working on the depth of field. I'll toggle it on under the camera settings and then turn on limits under viewport display. Now wherever this crosshair is, is whatever will be in focus. And I'll place it somewhere in the center bubble. Now if I turn down the f-stop value and just maybe tweak it, you can see that we start to blur everything out that isn't that center bubble. I'll push the camera in a little bit more by increasing the focal length to 85. Now I'm going to start real-time compositing on this shot. I'm going to add in the lens distortion node. You can see we don't see anything just yet. I'm going to turn the uh, viewport, under viewport settings, I'm going to turn the real-time compositor on in the camera view. And as I turn up distortion, you can see what we get. I'm going to also use an alpha over node to set the background color. Make sure I plug our render into the second input. And then I'm just going to use some other tricks like vignetting everything a little bit by using a, a mix color multiply with an ellipse mask. And if I just set the ellipse mask to be the correct scale, you can see what that does. I just need to blur it a little bit. And then in terms of render settings, I'm going to set the samples up to 2048. Uh, just because this scene is quite noisy, uh, there's a lot of reflection and lighting going on. And then the last thing I want to do is just play with the HDR a little bit. So in the shader panel under world settings, I'm going to control T on the environment texture to add in a mapping node and just rotate it on the Z until I get some better lighting. Now, this is a part where I'm not sure if what I did made this better or worse, but you can actually uh, increase the contrast in your HDR by uh, plugging in a regular math multiply and add node and then plugging the color input through those nodes into the strength. And you can see that you definitely get more contrasty lighting, but I'm not sure if it actually improved the final result. I actually rendered out um, the bubbles with both that on and off and maybe you can pick which one you prefer. But yeah, this took about 10 seconds per frame to render and you know, it's super easy to set up this new shader now. I think it's going to be very powerful. So I hope you enjoyed this.